The Pumpkin King rules over this nightmare shark with an iron fist, and it is my goal to rise to the top by gaining unnatural powers every 10 days and raising an army of horrendous beings in order to take this big guy down by day 100. Hey, 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 my lovelies! I am your humble ringmaster, Chromata, and without further ado, let the show begin! Here we are, spawning in at the hard-rated location under a dark sky, burnt vegetation, and Thyla's right next to me. I appeared next to some treasure which spawned throughout this map, so I got lucky by getting some beginner gear. As there were ruins all around me, I rushed to a nearby building to get some shelter and collect myself. I stayed near the entrance and grabbed some basic resources to begin establishing a foothold, my priority being to light up the interior with some torches, which led me to see an opening in the center, which has a spiral staircase leading deep underground. Curiosity got the better of me as I descended into the pit, walking past dead survivors that seemed to have been the former inhabitants of this place. Desert sands appeared at the end, leading into a cave. Cautiously, I peeked in, but I heard some massive spiders around the corner, so I noped right out of there for now. Nope, nope. I hear spiders or something. Nope, 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 that's enough for now. Okay. Now that the sun was up, I could properly get my bearings and see that these ruins are massive with fountains and gardens, so this would be a perfect place to call my own. It's free real estate. The place already came with its own gardener. This moss shop's right here, who I tamed and named William. Foundation was placed to claim these ruins, but as I went for a stroll to gather some resources, I got pounced by a Deodon leading to my first death. Hold up. Ah. After some kiting, I managed to get this fellow out of there and grab some sleeping bags from a drop which served as an early source of hide. Sadly, this cute little critter had to perish, but it allowed me to make a simple bed. To defend myself, I made a bow and hunted down some ants for chitin. I was trying to track down some easy prey when I saw a disturbance in the sand. A death worm seemed to be circling my base. Isn't that just lovely? After circling around it, a raptor decided to keep me stuck on a rock, and as my arrows ran out, hell, my escape attempt did not end in my favor. Once my stuff were finally retrieved, the death worm was coming straight towards me. However, it was stopped by its mortal enemy, trees. We had a bit of a stare down, but yours truly got away, and I ended up ending some cuter boas, as their hide was needed to make these here spike walls for the four entrances. The entire night was spent lighting up the place as I did not want to be caught off guard in case something got in. Day 3 in a forge along with a smithy was set up to make a metal pick to go get some crystal for a spyglass as I have no idea how to tame any of these creepy creatures. I came across these nodes with metal and charcoal in it which is neat for ammo grafting, but as I planned to go back our death noodle was trying to get me yet again. You again. But I escaped. I really need to figure out a way to get rid of this guy. Going in a different direction this time, I got a friendly reminder that we had more problems than just the worm. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I did not set up for this. Um, that's just lovely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no thanks. Ah, ow! Oh, no. I was, uh, much too close for comfort, but that is a definite no-no zone over there. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Rock Elemental, Thyla, more Thylas. Ah, okay, yep, yeah, alright, okay. With no luck getting my stuff back, the plans had changed to getting a flyer since leaving my tomb was a death wish. And with no PTs in the area, my only option was Lymantria, so I began clubbing some, resulting in my self-fainting, but I kept at it through multiple failed attempts and a scorpion death. That's night-night time. When I finally managed to send this moth off to count some sheep. In the meantime, I was just crafting some mini-me's for XP. Our buggy buddy was finally ready at day 5, and I named it Pixie Dust. We scurried on home, carefully avoiding conflict, but just as we made it in, my worst fears became reality. Oh my god! <gasps> oh no! With pure adrenaline coursing through my veins, I managed to save William and Pixie as well. And then I just could not find the death worm anymore, which is probably scarier than knowing exactly where it is. It could be anywhere, at any time. Well, gotta keep pushing. Time to make a saddle for our bug and explore, flying past amazing statues and volcanoes when we finally got some crystal. So at base, a awesome spyglass was made along with soul traps. And considering that there were many creepy tames I was wanting to get later on, William and I focused on making narcotics all night long. Day 6 had quite some progress, starting with a crossbow, trank arrows, a metal run, gunpowder on the way, some high gear, and some obsidian got gathered up at the end. 
Day 7 had me being chased off by a wolf and a Carno back into my base, and I was thinking maybe a good course of action would be to get some metal gates for the entrances, because those would also be impenetrable from the Deathworm. But for now, I decided it was time to choose my class for this adventure. I decided to become a Necromancer, which led me to setting up a altar in the center for Halloween decorations along with a Necromancer altar, within which I made my Necromancer staff, which just looks amazing by the way. We'll figure out what this do hickey does later. But the insane heat had me flying over someplace cooler for the moment, so I checked on some other creatures in the neighboring biome, where I saw a Minotaur, Ghost Fungus, Cyclops, and then got chased off by this little bugger called a Field Stalker, which is like four skulls fused to an eye. The metal gates would require a RG Anki combo, so on day 8 I made some stone gates, a long neck, and went to check for burbs, but only found this Dracorox. Seems cool, but maybe later. 9 was a day of taming. This level 95 RG would do just fine, so I wanted to go look for some mutton, but came across this big boy, which I knocked out and tamed, naming him Humongous. So now we have at least some offense. As for the RG, I gave up on mutton, but trapped it up, gently inserted some trank arrows, and after an eternity of waiting, Jerome was ready to take flight on day 10. But as the day was ending, I could finally give myself a small boost to my powers through this mirror. For aesthetics, I gave myself a crow head, of course, but with thermal vision, yes sir. Day 11 had me making tranks, hunting for chitin, crafting an RG saddle, and set out to find an Anki, which seemed to be pretty rare for some reason. I did come across some ch challen that looks super cool, but I was too low level to tame them at the moment, so I'll be back. The next day I came across these creepy looking demon flyers that were scorching anything that moved, along with a void boss in the distance, and the pumpkin boss with 2 million health. Well, we will deal with use later. Finally I came across a level 145 Anki, which I brought home and trapped in some gates, yet it managed to escape vertically twice. Again? Really? Bro! What the heck? Now that just ain't right, but I KO'd it within the base. I felt like my necromancer powers needed a bit of a boost, so I made a themed armor set on day 13, a soul dagger, and this crystal refill thingy. Surely will be useful soon, but I knew for the staff ammo I'd need a ton of cementing paste down the line, so I KO'd and tamed two scorpions close to home to make a chitin farm ASAP. Bianchi was fully tamed, and due to its climbing prowess, I named him Tom Holland, who got saddled up and taken out for a metal run. 14 was almost fully used for tranks, but I managed to head out to grab some prime and look for possible tames. We see here some cool looking Cerberus for the future. Definitely want one of those, but they have a lot of torpor. I went back to the challenge and tamed up one and named it Rathalos. But the stronger one just wouldn't eat again after waiting there for ages, so I'll circle back here later. These flesh monsters look amazing with organs and limbs all over the place, but sadly seemed untamable. But these demon brutes do, and I would love to make an army of these deadly devils. So I set up my gates and try to trap it, but these dudes are super fast and can burn, which led me to almost dying a few times, but that burn made me want them even more. It escaped and ran off at sonic speeds. We kept trying to trap it and I almost died again on day 16. Come on. <gasps> Oh no, this is bad. This is very, very bad. This is very bad. Okay, um, okay, um, Chalon, Rathalos, come here. Whew! That was clutch. I was thinking a box trap might be better for these beasts, so I gave up on that for the time being, as I made all these tranks for a different tame, actually. A griffin, since I want to move with the utmost speeds. So I trapped this low level one and began the process, but ran out of darts. So I switched my crossbow, and ran out of arrows, so I made a quick attempt to make narcotics right here on the site, pelted it with some more, and my crossbow broke. But with a regular bow, we managed to knock it out. There it is. It was fully tamed on day 17, and I named it Denji, since I am way too into Chainsaw Man right now as of making this video. I like that these have cool fur patterns, really unique. On the way back, I tamed that extra challenge and named it Draco Malfoy! And well, the rest was spent making narcotics and getting metal. So I got a new hat. At least my mom says I'm cool. Now Denji and I flew over to the snow for some penguins. This map has some amazing castles. I mean, just look at this pristine architecture. The ocean seemed to be a menacing place with massive titano krakens and massive overspawns of abyssal creatures making their way onto land. 
I tried to get a Kairuku all sneaky like, but it got ended, so. Oh no, there it goes. Come on, man. I just started bringing some of the Kairuku up to a safer area to tame, where I teamed up two to breed them at home, and ended some for Polymer. Rule number one of being a necromancer, boys. No witnesses. On the way, I tamed this ghost fungus, which looks so cute and cool. I named it Gorgeist. 19 was used to make a fabricator, but I needed oil for gasoline, so I went on that search. Came across some acid pits with some horrendous looking amalgamated crawlers. Nice, but no oil. I even went to the tar pits to find zero oil rocks. Alright, day 20. I need to give myself powers, but as I was playing, I messed up in my little notebook that I use to write down the things that I do as I'm recording, and thought that it was actually day 18 right now, so I'll be giving myself the powers on day 22 because, you know, I f***ed up. Some oil was collected in this water trench, spotted a hidden cave with an artifact in it, and a cool treasure with a special item. A Hun's Diamond, said to be used for something special. We'll see about that. Along with more treasures and this super cool iced out cave with black pearls under it. I saw some more pearls at the blue op, but as I jumped in, it was taking my health down so quickly. Sadly, all that just for some more black pearls as I was looking for regular ones. On the way home, this waterfall cave caught my eye. Inside was a ton of resources, and at the bottom of this pit was pearls. That'll hold me over for the time being. So. 21, make a generator, make an aircon, set up scorpion and penguin baby farm, and go tame two textegos since farming electronics is much more efficient. One was tamed this day, and the other on day 22. Here is where I give myself a boost to my magical powers. Aside from an aesthetic change, which was adding fur so my body isn't so exposed through this weird armor, I gave myself shadow main legs for invisibility, which has this cool, edgy animation on activation. The rest was used for an extensive crystal run, so I'd be set for a very long time. 23 revealed a very interesting, uh, mechanic. I harvested scorpions, made cementing paste to make ammo for the staff. Of course, this needed to be tested, and, well, take a look for yourself. Hey, yo, it's a rocket launcher! Yep, I'm officially the Rocket Mancer. Look, man, I'm planning to raise an army of skeletons and zombies here on a tight schedule. Quick kills equals horde of undead minions, okay? I was flying around to find a doodic when I saw the Pumpkin King was even closer now to my base. I need to build my defenses ASAP. A level 50 doodic was brought home and knocked out towards the evening. And there you go, this sleeping ball of pure joy was named Melatonin. So all of day 24 was spent doing some stone, flint, and metal runs so that at the end of the day, I could make four giant keep gates. And by day 25, all gates were fully set. Now I can be a bit more at ease, so I decided to work all day on a farm design around this horse fountain. I wanted to make like a donut shaped farm and it just... Well, it's not the prettiest, but it's something. Now that I was level 70, I went to check on the cool treasure from before, and it was pretty good. I'll be sure to hit up this place quite often. Some time was spent preparing stuff for a box trap, but I did test how soul collecting works. You just walk up to a corpse, use your soul refill thingamajiggy, and boom! Purple diamond appears. So I made a raptor reanimator, some more rockets, I mean... Bone extract. And peacefully sent this raptor to go sleep with the fishes. <laughs> there we go. And that, my friends, is how you make a corpse. This was a 130. Hey, what's up, bud? Came out as 142, but that is a massive health pool for a raptor. This sack of bones needs a name, of course, so it was dubbed Toothpick. And off I went to explore the vast lands once more. More box trap parts and tranks were prepared on day 27, but I was impatient and wanted to do something as narcotics were in the midst of being crafted, so I grabbed Toothpick and decided to check out that dungeon from day one. I proceeded with caution into its innards when I saw a clearing filled with bats and wolves, so I decided to show them some of my, uh, magic tricks. Nice. I thought things were going well, until I saw a high-level rubble golem inside, and I was almost out of ammo, so I retreated back to home to brave this place at another date. Prime meat was being gathered when I just made it out of there in time, as the death worm was back! I was enjoying my peace and quiet, but your boy just can't catch a break. As I was flying on over to the demon brutes, a 140 Cerberus was just chilling on a ledge. 
so I had to shoot my shot. I scrambled to get some more trap pieces together and stumbled upon another treasure with a blue diamond in it. Seems like we'll find a lot of these. Not really sure what they're used for. But I needed to focus. The trap was set. And, well, you can guess how that went. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh... That's my bad. Uh... Yeah, he, he's, he looks bigger than he seems. My, my math just wasn't mathing. So, time to tame what I actually wanted, a demon brute. And Lady Luck was with us as a 150 was looking submissive and tameable. I thought making the trap down the cliff would be a good idea to tame it in peace and quiet, but, you know, everything decided they wanted to help build the trap, much to my annoyance. Why must everything go in my trap when I don't want it to? That's right, come with me. Galbunga boy. Yeah, let's go. The tracking was long and hard, and as it seemed like it was almost done, boom. Server crash. Someone is punishing me, I just don't know why. I log back in to see the brute is no longer in the trap, or anywhere else for that matter. Just my luck. So, the only thing I could do was spend all day making more tranks. As day 3-0 came around, it was power time. So I added some feathers for looks, and I day on healing main. I already know how to use this one. But this day was used up mainly by making stone gates for a larger trap for larger creatures. 31 was a fruitless hunt for good rexes, although sightseeing in this map is always a good time. And on day 32, a level 150 female rex was spotted. You see, my plan is to make an army of rexes to end them, and raise them as skeletons. The trapping was scary, but also successful. She got knocked out, and towards the end of the day, Mother of Bones was ready to go. 3-3 had me running away from scorpion attacks in order to save William during a berry run, which led to it getting into the base, and killing not only Rathalos, but also Draco Malfoy. Which tells me that Chalon really are not a good pick for tames as they die so easily. So thank you, Scorpion, for weeding out the weak. The male Rex, of course, was still on the too tame list, but even from our griffin-eyed view, we had no luck. This dragged into 34, coming across cool treasures hidden across the lands, along with neat caves. This is really cool. You could build a lot of cool bases on this map. But as I was heading home, a level 135 Scorp mare caught my eye. These are some nasty critters, which is just what I'm looking for, so I went to go get more darts. Early morning, with darts in hand, I snatched up some mutton and lured this nasty thang into a gate trap, which made tranking super easy, so that once the sun was setting, it was tamed and named Daddy Infector, since it looks like an oversized Infector flood creature from Halo. 36 was productive, starting with a metal run, then harvesting narco berries with William, and ending the day pillaging, ransacking, and evicting beavers from their homes, all for that sweet, sweet cementing pace, since this was much faster than my scorpion method. After some more resource grinding on 37, I made some darts as I wanted to rematch with the Demon Brutes. A 145 was spotted and lured down into the same trap as before, with a successful tranking process leading me to tame Pinky the Demon. I admire these two models right here so much, they're just simply gorgeous. I'm taking part in the Extra Life charity this year to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. If you would like to help those in need, there's a link down below to donate to them. We will be raising money throughout his campaign further on my Twitch channel, where some of the milestones will become relevant during my coming 100 days live streams. That is all. Okay, back to the video. Bye bye Of course, now I needed a mail, but on my way I spotted a level 140 Cerberus perfectly placed within these ruins, so I sealed off the exits with some gates and just pelted it on top of Denji. It went smoothly. I took the time in between to check on the treasure nearby and looted it, as I frequently do, and since this creature looks like it's made out of magma, and I was in the runescape mood, I named it Tsarket. As soon as I left the area, I spotted another level 140 Cerberus, which could breed with mine, so I placed some gates as quickly as I could, but as I turned back to check in on it, well, it was no longer with us. Did you kill them, Golem? Holy shit, you're level 20 with 28k health, bro. Holy, did he kill? Okay, I need me a golem, dude. Like, what? So the rest of the day was squandered looking for a Rex yet again. Day 39 needed a extensive crystal run, but as I got back, the death worm was locked onto me like a missile. Like, how do you even know I'm here, man? I was sweating. It followed me into my base, but only with its rear showing out of the ground and did a little show? What is going on? Whoa! What the? Must be a war dance. But it vanished similarly to the first time this happened, and K-Mode showed it was no longer here. 
I can only assume that it fell through the ground as it seems to be hollowed out here for some reason. But back to the poly gathering and more metal. 40 was a new power day, so I grew a glowing raptor tail and off to hunt more rexes when finally a decent male was spotted. A 135 male which was easily tamed using traps and was named Scissor Fangs. Day 41, Rex is set to breed, SS item collector placed, narcotics made, and off to look for another brute. Day 42, a level 140 seems to be good enough, so same trap, same darts, same food, and boom, Balrog was tamed and ready to get to know Pinky. Daddy Infector was feeling kind of lonely, so I looked for a mate, but was unsuccessful. I'm a bad wingman. There are some cool summons you can do in this mod, like summoning all sorts of skeletons or creatures from the void, but they need a lot of keratin, considering I would maybe want to make an army. So just like in my hybrids 100 days, I was getting a breeding pair of Kentros, with one of them being knocked out and took forever to tame by using berries. But I stayed with it for all of day 44, so nothing would spawn near it, and that led to getting this chain done on day 45. A quick checkup was made on the demons and rexes to mix the stats, and then did an oil run. Once home, I nuked my many rexes and demon babies with unmixed stats to level up to level 92 to my surprise, but now I could learn reanimate rex, which is what I was after. On day 46, a male Kentra was spotted and tranked out, so I did the same as last time by staying near it all day long, to have an unhindered taming process for it to be tamed on day 47. So with them now breeding, I restocked my spells and shotgun ammo to try the cave once more, which ended up like this. Oh shit, no, this is the end, I'm stuck. I did rush in to get my stuff back, but this cave is so vast. I did push somewhat deeper, but came to the conclusion I was severely underprepared, so I turned back. Look, I was thinking this would be a regular, uneventful cave like many maps have, but this one seems pretty darn nice. And difficult. As for those summons I mentioned, it was time on day 48 to farm some essence to make some. So I ended all sorts of vile creatures for undead essence, along with the demon and void kind, which allowed me to summon my minion, a skeleton warrior. It looks super cool, but they do seem to come in at random levels, so I need to try this multiple times to get some good troops. But there were more things to bring into this plane, so more essence was farmed, but with some brutes to make these kills faster. Day 50, halfway mark, and it's time for some more powers. I figured some hypo resistance would be adequate, and some more feathers on my head. A new summon was made, a tormented. The design is just so cool, I absolutely love this. But its stats are underwhelming, to say the least. So. Back to hunt for essence, in particular the void type. I farmed at this mountain, dealing very nice damage, and was healing us up with my Deodon main to tank better. The flax set and sword was made in order to summon a possessed armor. It looks fantastic like the rest, but with those stats, I see very little use in it. The first skeleton warrior seems to be the best so far. A little bit of metal run was done to end the day. On day 51, I made a discovery. It seems like the skeleton warrior and tormented can't eat, as their food is literally zero, so they most likely will die after some time. So if I want to raise an army of skeleton warriors, I'm better off summoning them right as I'm about to go fight something. A chemical bench was placed in order to make gunpowder faster, which allowed me to make 40 bone extracts and ended the day with more oil being gathered, along with some obsidian. I kept up the productivity on day 52 with more oil gathering, metal runs, and tending to the farm, planting some veggies and narco berries. These resources were used on 53 to make an industrial cooker to pump out medbrews. Shotgun ammo was restocked and a crystal run was extremely necessary. It was done in order to make a fridge on 54, I was wanting to hunt for souls later, but I tried out killing my own tames and see if that works, and it does, so we have a limitless amount of souls for the taking to make skelly rexes. So test subject number one. As a level 246 rex with 9500 health and 396% melee, it gets resurrected with four souls, comes back to life as a level 202 with a staggering amount of health. That is just absolutely bonkers, but it does have less levels into melee. And another one came out as a level 30, so I'm assuming all the levels are just randomized with extremely high health pools. I did the same on a male, and they actually breed together? I was told by some people that they don't breed, so I'm surprised. But 
What hatched out of the egg was just a regular Rex, which, in all fairness, is probably a good thing for balance issues. The deep abyss of the cave was calling out to me, so I returned to its embrace. The rubble golem appeared in the first room and it decided it would like to ascend into the heavens at Mach 5 speeds. There you go. What? What? Let's try this again. What? I'm so confused and terrified at the same time. Whoa! Are you... What is going on? What? I made it into the second room and the fighting began. I barely got a chance to even breathe between the attacks and I was quickly running out of ammo. A spider caught me off guard and poisoned me, so I needed to take a step back and gather some sim berries to fight off the torpidity. I was determined to progress, but with less engagements, so I ran in and spotted a doorway. I quickly rushed in which led me into a third room, which was beautiful and chill. No creatures here. It had some really cool treasure inside it, which I managed to loot twice. I wanted to press on, which had me facing piranhas and sarcos in a water area. Day 56 rolled around and it seemed like this water was an infinite source of piranhas, but I cleared them out with explosions, arrows, and my dagger. Diving into the deep cave, I had to pull back as I did not have enough oxygen to confidently go further. Truly wish I had given myself the power of water breathing at this point. Since I was out of useful combat supplies at this point, I sprinted out, only to see that most of the creatures had respawned. Oh my god, I did it all! <laughs> Alright, so, now I made it out of that alive, it was time to restock all day on ammo like a madman. And make some scuba items. I was determined to uncover the secrets that this cave held on day 57. Armed to the teeth with ammo and supplies, I cleared out room number one and two, leaving me already with half of the ammo that I came in here with. Instead of the water path this time though, the shaft caught my attention, so I used a grapple onto the roof and descended on down in case I needed to zip up quickly in case there were enemies. I arrived in a narrow shaft, which led me to a bat cave absolutely filled with these dastardly things. So much lead was unloaded. Holy shit! Once the coast was cleared, I crossed this jumping section for more treasure, which led me to what seemed like a salt tunnel ending in a ruined chamber. These creatures must be protecting something good. There were arrow traps along with areas to fall into, but we braved the halls, which led into the final snake chamber. Absolutely stunning. Once the creatures were disposed of, I was practically out of ammo for large engagements. Slowly, I crossed these snake stairs that spiraled up towards the roof. I absolutely love this cave. 10 out of 10. At the top, the artifact of the immune was waiting for me. Once retrieved, I parachuted down to see that there were a couple more nasties to greet me as I arrived. But once they were disposed of, I made my way out from a little opening that I found in the wall. What? You mean to tell me I could have just come in from this side and gotten the artifact with all that other hoo-ha? Long trek needed to be made to get back home because I didn't have a flyer with me, so that took a little while. But once we were home, you know the drill, time to spend the day amassing more ammo. So, ammo was making itself on day 59, so I set out to look for a female scorp mare. I didn't forget about these, you know. A level 60 was spotted, safari style tamed, and named Waterbug. With them now breeding to mix their stats, I got to reanimating many Rexes. Since that last cave was such a great time, of course I needed to do more. I needed to find what this map had in store for me. So, a grapple arm was implanted onto my wrist as it was day 60, making me feel like Spider-Man over here. There was a swamp cave listed in the map's wiki page, which held an artifact that I really wanted, so I whooshed on over there only to enter the narrow pathways for my lungs to be filled with poisonous gas. So, uh, go back home, make a sap tap, yeet myself over to the redwoods and place it there at the pre-existing tree houses. So, the next morning I grabbed what it made, got home, See that it wasn't enough for all the absorbent substrate that I needed for gas masks. So, go back there, wait forever for it to make more, and then finally make the substrate to make a ton of gas masks. There we go. Now, back to the cave. I ended up in this massive room that I personally would love to build in if it would not be, as I mentioned, gassy. 
The thermo vision really helped me out to find the aggressive creatures amongst the lush vegetation. The main issue was coming across swarms of high-level Meganwera, but we kept trekking deeper, coming to a water zone to which I grappled down to. Piranhas gave me a warm welcome, but this was a confusing circuit of tunnels. I took the time to grapple up the center stump to find nothing at the top, kinda disappointed, but okay. Parachuted down and eventually came across a egg chamber, so I knew I was going the right way now. This took us into day 63, still figuring out which of these dastardly paths was correct, coming across loot drops from time to time, but once I rushed through the egg chamber, I saw a small entrance which led me to the final room filled with these flippin' flies. A quick dash to the back and I earned us the artifact. Now, to run back before everything respawns! <gasps> that was a... Ah. Run, boy, run. They're trying to wet you. Phew! That was too close for comfort. But I'm now even more so excited to explore this map further. So, more medrues and ammo needed to be made. Next up was the so-called Run and Jump Cave on Day 64. Walking through this narrow pathway, I get greeted by some undead. Truly a fitting scene for these. But they weren't alone. What the? Hello, Crystal Golem. Say hello to my little friend! Oh shit! Oh shit! He's fast! Oh! Dude, he was zooming. Had to collect myself after that fright, but we pressed on. Reaching a room with a sign seeming to want to discourage me from proceeding. Yet, it cannot stop me, for I can't read. With the grapple arm, I descended deeper and deeper into the bowels of the cave, arriving in a pool of bubbling water. Signs appeared, truly wishing to mock my attempts, but I did not care. We arrive at a crossroads, but I made the decision to always keep going left, to keep track easier of where I went. We must be getting deep, as lava became more frequent, and then we stumbled into this vast tunnel with gemstones lining its surface. I crossed the bridge hesitantly, and came across intimidating decor. The fact that all these signs are taunting me frustrates me more because there's very little in this cave and it makes me worry that there's like a mini boss or something. Um, yeah, about that mini boss. I'm kind of worried. A jumping puzzle laid before us and they exploited my only weakness, not being able to grapple up. Which is fair, in all fairness, I don't need these stinking grapples anyway. It was rough, falling into the lava multiple times, but thankfully, I was loaded with med brews and I had my healing aura powers. Completing this section was super fun, yet difficult, and took almost all of day 65, but once I passed this final part with the rings on the roof, I entered yet another treacherous obstacle room filled with lava pits, with no way to get across. I soon figured out that what I needed to beat this cave was climbing picks, which... Obviously, I don't have, because I did not Google how to beat any of these caves prior. So, I had no option but to get out of there and go home to prepare for an expedition to the Aberration Zone for green gems to make the desired picks. Our quest brings us to this water entrance. I equipped my scuba and swam till I arrived at a hole. Going further in, we exit the water through this force field and ta-da! Aberration Zone. Denji joined me to be my set of wheels to make this much easier. This place is enormous, hosting all of the colored aberration zones you would expect, but I came here for these green gems and some fungal wood. And since I was here, I grabbed some blues and reds to go. The way out was chill, but before I went home, I stopped by some apex loot drops to stock up. At base, I made as many climbing picks as I possibly could, and back to the lava cave. You get how it goes, but a unforeseen effect hit me. Uh oh, this is not good. This is extremely trippy, dude. What is going on? Once past the jumping section again, we put these picks to use, dodging the arrows being fired from some statue faces, and it was going super swell. Until, well, it wasn't. Okay, so I have absolutely no idea what happened, but all my stuff on me was gone. Just vanished off of the face of the map with no way to get them back. So. Among all the great supplies that I lost, there was Denji in a soul trap. It breaks my heart, but I had to set up a grave for it, of course. Once we said our goodbyes, I could only do one thing. Keep going forward, of course, which meant to spend a lot of time, you guessed it, making ammo and getting all new gear. 
And this continued for the entirety of day 68 logically along with regular stops at my apex loop traps. And the same goes for 69, but as Emma was being made on the side, I was reanimating Rexes in hopes to get lucky. You see, it might be crazy OP to have as much health as these Rexes do, but they can't be imprinted for their boosts, and their melee is random. So as OP as they seem, they have some cons to them, so I was trying my best to get around 20 Skelly Rexes that all had at least 25 melee or higher, which apparently is not very common. I took a break from sacrificing my children and gave myself a set of horns and hyper resistance as it was power day on day 70, but the grind continued all day long. And it dragged through 71 as well, but now I had 20 Rexes like I wanted. 72 was when I decided to tame some UDs to boost my creatures in future battles due to their lackluster potential damage output. And you get it by now, every time I'm out, I get these chests. There are lots of nooks and crannies in this map where they hide around, so if you ever play on this map, be sure to always keep an eye open. A good XUD was spotted and the trap was deployed, which was absolutely ineffective, and it started torpor running. Here we go again. It hid itself in a cliff, thinking that if it can't see me, I can't see it. But it suddenly lashed out and threw me off of the cliff. A handy dandy parachute saved the day and Jerome came after me swiftly, saving me from this incident. Once it got itself trapped in this hole, it got knocked out. The day after, we potted it up and started looking for a ex-female, when I found another entrance that led to the Aberration Zone, where I spotted some Crystal Wyverns. That's a really nice touch to the map. Sadly, for the entire day, no female was found, so I just went home. And now, since a dino wipe had happened in between IRL days, the hut was on yet again on day 74. A weak XUD was spotted, but that would be enough to mix with the male stats. I tried to trap it with some gates, when uh, a little old reckless me forgot that UD fear roars are an actual thing. So dead. Whew. And where do you think you're going? Sweet cheeks. Not, not into the water again, dude. No, we've been through this so many times. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm in the middle of nowhere with no flyer, but the UD at least got knocked out. I cooked some meat next to it as my brain was cooking up a plan. Once it was up, we set out to look for a Argy to tame as I had Jerome's saddle. Rest in pieces, by the way, my guy. The terrain was rough to say the least, and the revenants that call this place their home alongside the natural fauna made this night very long. I ran throughout the night and into the cold morning of day 75, saving myself from a pack of wolves by grappling up a ledge leading to their literal downfall. A long distance parachute jump got me out of the snow. Nearby, a level 150 Argy was spotted. This was my ticket out of here. I was trying to get stuff for a trap when this void dude came out of nowhere. Oh no, dude, no. Holy shit, you have a lot of health, dude. Once it seemed to have left, the trap was set up and the RG went in with no questions asked. I waited patiently for our new friend to join us when we got a bit of a surprise. Whoa, 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 dude. Yo. Calling a wolf airstrike or something? What the heck? Since this bird had similar colors to Jerome, it was simply dubbed Jerome the Second, with whom we flew home safe and sound. UDs were mixing themselves together in the early hours of day 76, so now it is time to do the dreaded lava cave yet again. At the entrance, I placed a box and put the RG inside to prevent losing it like we'd lost Denji. Speedrunning this cave was getting easier. Once past the jumping puzzle part, the picks came out and I crawled along just fine. The last bit had me speed climbing to avoid the insane amount of arrow dispensers. But man, am I glad that little section's over. The last little bit still laid before me, which was a water section, and I forgot my scuba gear, and I never gave myself that water breathing that I mentioned. So I took a dive of faith and saw a force field. Falling into a pool of water, I found myself in this lava slash waterfall cave with the artifact of the Sky Lord up for taking. And off I went towards the exit. 77 and we are almost home free. Some skeletons needed to be disposed of when I saw this cute little fella just just chilling. I mean, look at him. Bone slug? Uh, hey buddy. Are you, um, uh, are you aggressive? Are we good? I'm just gonna... 
I'm just gonna go. Traps were hidden amongst the bushes, but they were no match for yours truly. At the exit, the scent of the ocean welcomed me. Which is bad, since I need to get up to get to my RG. But no problem. Got to it. And home we went to prepare ammo again all day long. As much as I liked our new RG, we needed our speeds back, so this level 130 Griffin will do splendidly. I ended up trapping two in the same trap? I guess I've gotten too good at this. No? Okay. I disposed of the low level one and tamed up the one we wanted, naming it Pochita for obvious reasons. I thought to myself that an industrial grinder would be nice since this map just dumps you with amazing loot. So a cementing paste run was done, and the remainder was dedicated to crystal and metal gathering. 80, and it's time for power-ups! I grew some more arm feathers and finally gave myself the underwater breathing. Probably too late for that now, but oh well, we'll see. More metal was collected, but it was nice to see the UDs were now fully mixed together. Textegos got dissected for oil, and penguins were devoured by the great glutton William. My search for oil led me through an underwater tunnel on D81. Once emerged and back out of this giant trench, I found myself next to the Pumpkin King! So, how you ever doing? I figured I might as well test out my damage against this massive boy. Uh, have one of these. Ooh. Okay, what was that? Like a. Oh, oh shit! Ah! Oh crap, he's fast. Thank you for your time, baby. I'm out. I was gathering resources to make some behemoth gates. As you see, I had a little plan of grand magnitude. There's told to be a nightmare dragon on this map. I'm not even sure which of my mods put it in, or if it's just from the map, but I saw it once for a brief moment as I was setting things up in the server before it vanished. My goal is to get enough artifacts to fight Dragon to unlock the tech transmitter and Monkey to get the tech generator to see if I can scan and find this elusive beast and trap it with the mentioned behemoth gates. The grinder was finally done and put to use and yielded a hefty amount of resources. A pair of ascended flat gauntlets were made and all my best gear was pulled together for another daring dungeon dive. 82 was the day where the artifact of the strong needed to be retrieved from its icy lair. I zipped past the ice wyverns guarding the entrance, and once my valuables were set aside in a box for safety, in we go. To immediately be swarmed by overleveled cave dinos pushing me back out in a desperate attempt to stay alive. Once the coast was finally clear, I went deeper and deeper into the frozen pit, coming across a lovely snowman room which was a welcoming sight, as he even had gifts for me. I do gotta say though, Prilovges, they... they could be removed from the game in my humble opinion. Lowering myself with my cord through the crystallized cavern, we push on and arrive at the bat room with frozen bridges. The bats needed to be disposed of before going across, as the water down there most likely will hurt if I fall in. Day 83 came around, still dealing with these flying rat foxes. The shotgun staff combo, though, is undefeated. Grab the artifact, a parting gift in the form of some loot crates, and skedaddle on out of there. But the same issue as before plagued me. I had no flyer on me, so I needed to sneak back into the ice wyvern zone to get my stuff back at the entrance. Slowly but surely, I made my way through the area, avoiding being spotted. Thanks to our climbing capabilities, we successfully got reunited with the box and its contents so we could go home with artifact in hand. To end the day, I made a ton of wreck saddles, popped out the best ones that I had, saddled them up, and dumped all their levels into melee. Three artifacts remained, so 84 was designated to collect the artifact tucked in the Redwoods Gold Cave. As I got to the first clearing, Reaper Queens decided that I was not going to go any further, as my glow tail did not seem to work, so they were not taking enough damage at all from my shotgun. I feel like this tail has been falsely advertised. So I tried another trick up my sleeve, the Shadow Invisibility. <gasps> oh, ah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. okay, so I don't have the patience to go tame glow pets right now, so it was time to sprint through this entire cavern as fast as we thought we ran when we were kids with our flashing shoes. Though most of you are probably too young to relate to that. Just run. Don't look back. Ow! Things seemed to calm down as I reached this long hall. Avoiding engagements brought me down a path 
and at the light at the end of the tunnel, I spotted the artifact. Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh no, it's on me. It's on me. Uh, we're gonna get to know each other real well, I assume. Ooh. Okay, so uh, that's a riot shield. We're ready. There goes nothing. Huh? I jumped over it. <sighs> Let's just play the floor is lava and not go down there unless we want to wake the alien mummy. Well, there you go. Artifact was plucked from its spot and out we grappled ourselves to go and take a breath of fresh air only to go make more and more ammo for tomorrow's outing. Sanctuary Cave was up next. An entire cave system made in the shape of a ruined castle with fights beginning early on in the first room. Shortly after, I came across a crossroads where each path had a designated color, it seemed. I chose red, which landed me at a lava section, with enough bats to make Bruce Wayne feel right at home. A little bit of jumping across the lava pits and bam, a beautiful room filled with shimmer equus and shimmering loot. Moving on, the giant horse statues at the end of this corridor signaled to me that that was the final room. Not again, dude. What? It, 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 it climbed up. All the trash mobs needed to be pulled out, but dang, these bats are just getting so tough. Here goes nothing. Go, 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 Move your stinking legs! Close call for Crow, but we can't stop now. The final cave requires more supplies to be made at home. Last one on the list was in the so-called Wyvern Cave where we spotted the Crystal Ones a few days back. This ended up being the easiest cave as the inhabitants were so friendly. I just walked on up to it and uh, mission complete, I guess. I stayed around to grab as many loot drops and proceeded with this till nightfall across the entire map as I was hoping to get a good Rex Saddle BP. The sun rose on day 87 as I was cracking at ammo, went to name the UD I'd use for the bossing Bard.mp3, and prepared all the battle dinos at the terminal. 88 brought upon the fight with the monkey as we teleported in and almost immediately got told to hippity hoppity off of his property. Hey yo, what the, why are you here? There we go. Okay, so my worries seem to have been unnecessary for this fight, but that's okay, better safe than sorry. Some time was spent healing the horde, but what we really wanted to do was to craft this tech replicator and then prepare for the dragon fight. And we're off on day 89 with dragon. I was a tad nervous as, you know, the fire damage, which is percentile, doesn't really care too much about how big your health pool is. Cause you know, math. Melt him! Oh, they're fighting in the lava, no! Rush him! Oh, they're so fast! They zoom in! They still deal so much damage, what the hell? That was great! Alrighty then, that leaves us with only the final boss left. And a bonus hunt to complete if we get lucky to find the nightmare. A black pearl run was needed out in the snow to make more tech structures, and on the way back, a horde of undead was seen at a castle nearby base, which I cleaned up for all their essence. Finally, 10 days, and I still needed the tech structures and my army of undead warriors, for which I needed lots of metal, keratin, and undead essence. So what better way to get that than to raid the undead castle, blow all my enemies to smithereens, and chainsaw their corpses for scrap metal, keratin, and essence. With the added bonus of the occasional loot drops for high-tier grindable loot for ingots, funnest gathering method I could come up with. Later I realized that I forgot to give myself the powers, silly me. So it was finally time to give me the thing that I wanted since the beginning, wings that give me the power of flight. And they look quite stunning to be honest. But yeah, all day was spent back and forth between slaughtering and depositing. 91, tech gen got made, along with more supplies and spending all day in the cave wreaking some havoc. 92, Tech transmitter placed, and the Nightmare Dragon does not seem to be active at the moment. I'll be keeping my eye on this all the time through the next days. The Essence helped to make some initial trips, and more metal was gathered the old-fashioned way. 93, Behemoth Gates were done as a trap just in case, and back to the cave for supplies all day. 
With a horde of Kentras at my disposal, I disposed of them in order to make the final skeleton warriors. Summoning them in, I decided to name all of them after my patrons, who all have access to my 100 day servers, as their contributions help greatly in producing these videos. Levels needed to be added to the horde of monsters for the boss fight, so these sinister scorp mares, devious demons, and raging rexes got turned into glass cannons with all levels put into melee. Towards the evening, I decided to take my pup into battle and pumped all of its levels into health, so all night was spent at its side healing it. The skeleton warriors needed the few levels they accumulated as well, when I noticed one of them laid a dilo egg. There's way too many things wrong about that for me to worry about that at the moment. But it was awesome to look upon my awesome army. Time was spent crafting bone essence should it be necessary since explosives might help as the pumpkin king is essentially a giant golem. 92 was used up entirely for ammo and leveling up more and more creatures to be on the safe side and more leveling through day 98. Nothing else to add there. The fight approaches swiftly. The dinos I leveled were pretty much all I was going to get done in time. So I rushed on over to find the preposterous pumpkin and began setting up waves of creatures, assigning group numbers and placing them in neat little rows. And here we are! The final day and I was itching to fight and so were my tames. Each type serves a purpose. The skeletons deal bleed, the scorpmares do a poison cloud which I believe does tick damage, and the demon brutes deal burn. And the rexes just pack a heavy punch and can take one too. Now, Bard.mp3 was ready to help out with her drawers and it was time to dethrone the pumpkin king and claim our rightful place as king of this land. Go and get him. Ow. What the? Holy, okay, I did not expect that. Okay. Uh, group number two, maybe. Go, boys. Holy, that is so much damage. I did not expect that. Go, 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 go. They're all dead. He one-shots them. That's crazy. Okay, 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 okay. I have a plan, I have a plan, I have a plan, I have a plan. Go, humongous! Go get him! And he's dead. Okay. Demon time! It's demon time! Let's go! Uh oh! Ow! Oh shit! No! Bard! No! Oh crap, okay, he's also dead. That's pretty bad. Oh, that's worse than I expected. He did. But he's almost dead! Wait! He's gonna die! He's gonna die! He's dead! He's dead! And there you have it, we are now the Pumpkin King. Sadly, the Nightmare Dragon never spawned in the final days, but trust me, the next 100 days will have plenty of dragons. Be sure to support the charity and follow me on Twitch to watch the future Arc 100 Day streams live as it happens, which will then later obviously become videos for YouTube. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time. Take care now, and bye bye